Color can be used to determine the identity of a mineral, but you need to be careful because the color of a mineral can be affected by weathering, which is wear resulting from exposure to things like wind and water, as well as by impurities in the mineral. For example, this quartz is clear. Amethyst is a type of quartz, but it is purple because of impurities. Citrine is a form of quartz as well, but impurities give it an orange color. Take a look at the mineral specimen on your screen and select the correct color from the drop-down menu. Luster is a term that describes the way light reflects off the surface of a mineral. Metals are generally shiny. They have what is called a metallic luster. There are many terms used to describe luster. Some of the terms you will use to identify minerals in this lesson include waxy, vitreous, and earthy. Click on each term to see a description before you continue. Metallic. Minerals with a metallic luster have a shiny appearance and reflect light. Waxy. Minerals with a waxy luster look like they are coated with a layer of wax. Vitreous. Minerals with a vitreous luster have a glassy appearance. Earthy. Minerals with an earthy luster have a dull appearance and are not very reflective. Now select the term that best describes the luster of the mineral specimen from the drop-down menu. Is streak. Streak is the color of a mineral in its powdered form. A streak test is usually carried out by scraping the mineral across an unglazed porcelain plate. The streak color of a mineral is not necessarily the same as its surface color. Unlike surface color, however, streak color is not affected by weathering because most of the powder is coming from inside the mineral. Now, drag the mineral sample on your screen to the streak plate to see the color of its streak, and then select the correct color from the drop-down menu. Hardness is a term that describes a mineral's ability to resist scratching. The Mohs Hardness Scale ranks the hardness of minerals from 1 to 10. Minerals with a hardness of 1 are very soft and scratch very easily. Talc has a hardness of 1, and you can scratch it with a fingernail. Diamonds have a hardness of 10, and they are very difficult to scratch. Each number on the Mohs scale has a common reference mineral. One way to determine the hardness of a mineral sample is to try to scratch one of the reference minerals with the sample. For example, if an unknown mineral scratches a reference mineral with a hardness of 3, but won't scratch a mineral with a hardness of 4, its hardness is less than or equal to 4. Minerals of the same hardness will not scratch each other. 
If the sample is scratched by a reference mineral with a hardness of 4, the unknown mineral has a hardness below 4, somewhere around 3.5. The mineral sample on your screen scratches orthoclase, but is scratched by quartz. Select the correct hardness for the mineral sample from the drop-down menu. Minerals can break apart by either cleavage or fracture. Cleavage is the tendency of a mineral to split along flat faces. For example, when you strike a piece of halite, which you learned is a salt that has cube-shaped crystals, it tends to break into smaller cubes. Jewelers take advantage of cleavage when they have to shape diamonds and other stones used in jewelry. Unlike cleavage, when a mineral fractures, it does not break along flat faces. It produces uneven or curved surfaces. Now, drag the hammer to the mineral specimen on your screen to see whether it displays cleavage or fracture, and then select the correct term from the drop-down menu.